Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to share with you a few tips to prepare for project-based questions in interviews. Basically, questions that ask you to talk about previous data science projects. I will go through a few questions that I get asked constantly from emails and LinkedIn messages, which include, what if I don't have an interesting project to talk about? How much detail to provide when describing a data science project? How to engage the interviewer? If you have similar questions, this video is definitely for you. The only thing I want you to do is to stay till the end of this video because the tips will become better and better as you understand the context more. Now, let's get started. For the first tip, I want to start with sharing a few questions that many people ask me. What if my project is not good enough? What if none of my projects is impactful or exciting? How to describe a boring project? Well, let's face it, not all projects are exciting. The reality is, we as data scientists are dealing with lots of mundane tasks at work, such as answering ad hoc questions, doing some debugging, analoging or experiments, and etc. It's just part of the job. So it is expected that not all projects you have worked on are interesting and challenging. Not only you may face this problem, but also many data scientists, even seasoned data scientists, might face the same issue. So how do you talk about a not so interesting project in an interview? Well, my suggestion is we should always refine a project to make it interesting. We need to package it up to share it with the interviewer. Actually, even for a very impactful and exciting project, you need to spend some time to refine it and make it interesting for your audience. Depending on the project, sometimes we need to add more details to enrich it and sometimes we need to subtract information from it. That is a refinement process and every project needs it. Well, it sounds good, but how to do it, right? I have two suggestions for you. The first one is to zoom out and think about the big picture. When you work on a project, it's very easy to get into the nitty-gritty details and those details may be the most time-consuming part of the project. While details are important, only describing details in an interview can be distracting and boring. You need to make a good story out of it. I want you to take a step back and ask yourself why it is an important project. Why did you or your company choose to work on that project in the first place? Once you have clear answers to those questions, you could make a story about it. Now, I want to share with you how one of my data scientist friends made a story out of a seemingly boring project by thinking through a few questions. Once a friend came to me and asked me, Emma, I'm gonna have an interview next week with a company I'm very interested in joining. But I'm worried the hiring manager will ask me about what am I doing in my current job. Because the only project I have been working on in the last few months is to just validate some logging data by doing some random analysis and it's pretty tedious and boring. How do I talk about it? I asked her, what data are you evaluating and analyzing? She answered, the data set contains the results of an online experiment. Then I asked her, why do you need to validate the data? She said, well, because we need to have reliable data in order to make a product launch decision. Okay, I said, why is the product launch important to your company? She said, it's important because it has the potential to change a business metric significantly. Finally, I said, awesome, so you are saying that you are working on a project that's critical to shift an important business metric in your company and it involves running an online experiment. Data quality is critical for making the launch decision of that experiment and you are in charge of making sure the data is trustworthy to use. It sounds like a very interesting and impactful project to me. Nothing about it is boring. Well, I definitely simplified our conversation, but you get my point. We need to take a step back and reevaluate a boring project so that we can have a convincing story about the project we have worked on. Moving on to the second tip, remove all unnecessary details. 
It's a tempting idea to give the interviewer the whole picture of a project, to share everything about the project. But believe me, adding too much details will only distract the interviewer. The interviewer may be confused on what point you want to make. Let me share with you one of my own interview experiences. When I was asked to talk about a previous project during my first few interviews, I planned to talk about a project that I was very proud of. I learned a lot from doing that project. So I talked about it during the interview, including how I cleaned the data step by step, how I developed all the different machine learning models, how I tuned all the model parameters, and what was the exact accuracy of each model. I tried to impress the interviewer with all the technical details. I wanted to give him an impression that I have done a lot, I knew a lot, and I can do well as a data scientist at his company. And guess what? I got the feedback that I fell short on the communication aspect. My answer was too hard to follow, especially when I was describing a project. Now you know we should remove all unnecessary details, but what details to keep? I'd suggest start with you. Think about what role you have played in that project. Only details that are relevant to your contribution should be kept and highlighted. Knowing that the only goal of an interview is to get enough signal that if you are a capable candidate or not. The only thing in the interviewer's mind is whether you could do a good job, whether you could deliver. So details related to your contributions are worth keeping. Well, you don't want to keep all of them though. As we have mentioned in the previous tip, a refinement is needed. You want to highlight the most important things that you have done, not everything. Also, when you present a project, you don't need to follow the timeline of how a project was actually done. I want to share with you another personal experience. I once worked on a project that lasted for a year, and it was prioritized at the beginning of the year then it got deprioritized, then resumed again. The business metric has changed back and forth due to various reasons. Even the team involved have changed a lot. While I was preparing for an interview, I wanted to talk about that project, and I spent lots of time refining it. I chose to use a single business metric that I thought made the most sense for that project, and I also read down some analysis to get some numbers I wanted to share with the interviewer. My goal was to highlight what I was able to deliver in an organized manner among all the chaos during that year. So now you know what details to keep. I want to clarify that even though removing unnecessary details is recommended, you do want to think through all the details before an interview. Very often, an interviewer asks you some follow-up questions about the project you have described. If you have done a good job talking about a project but cannot answer follow-up questions well, it's also a red flag. The last tip is to engage the interviewer. The truth is, whether you have done a great project depends on how well you deliver it. And it's important to keep the audience engaged and make the interviewer feel this is an interesting and challenging project. It seems to be something easier said than done, right? But I'm going to give you two suggestions that are easy to follow and very effective. Effective in the sense that you could make the interviewer like your answer and outperform many candidates. The first one is to avoid talking nonstop. Talking nonstop is a red flag when describing a project. But many people do this. They do this out of nervousness. They feel uncomfortable to have a moment of silence during interviews. So they just keep talking for 10 minutes or so without a pause. The reason this is a red flag is that if you keep talking the whole time, it's very hard for you to keep the interviewer engaged. They might lose attention after two to three minutes, so they may miss some of the very interesting parts of your project. The way to engage the interviewer is to make it a conversation rather than a report. And sometimes you can simply take a pause and ask if they have any questions or if anything is unclear. Think about how you work with your colleagues at work. When you describe an idea or present a project, you always want to make sure they understand you, right? It's very similar to an interview. 
you want to make sure the interviewer understands what you try to convey. Another suggestion is to tweak the project a little bit based on the type of the interviewer. The level of details you share should depend on the interest of the interviewer. Typically, the recruiter tells you who you will be interviewing with in advance. If the interviewer is an individual contributor, such as a data scientist, you can share more technical details about the project. Versus if the interviewer is a data science manager, and the manager may not care too much about technical details, they may be more interested in the business side of the project, like a collaboration with different teams, how you influence the decision-making process. So you want to highlight more non-technical aspects of a project. To recap, there are three tips I have shared with you. The first one is not every project is exciting, and you need to refine it to make it interesting. The second tip is to remove all useless information. Details that's not related to your contribution or insights are not worth keeping. The third one is to engage the interviewer. There are two suggestions. One is to avoid talking nonstop. It's totally fine to take a pause and check with the interviewer if anything is unclear. The other one is to share different levels of details depending on the type of the interviewer. Okay guys, that's everything I want to share with you today. I said three tips, but it's actually more than that. There are suggestions within tips. Anyways, I hope it's helpful. Drop me a comment if you have any questions related to this kind of interview question or any interview question. I'd be happy to help. As always guys, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. I will see you soon.